we're headed over to a neighbor's yard to watch the launch of a Falcon 9 uh, launching a Indonesian telecom satellite into orbit uh, today at 3.11 p.m. Eastern Time and we're just passing 3 p.m. right now. So, I'll show you what it looks like out in front of me here. This should be our view. I'm not entirely sure where the Falcon 9 will rise above the uh, tree line over here, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. And uh, I'll adjust the camera if I need to. But yeah, here's our view. <laughs> this is uh, pretty exceptional. I'm just going to set this up on the tripod. I'm also going to be recording with my uh, cell phone, which has 10x zoom, so uh, that will help, I'm sure, in this uh, thing here. But we are, let's see now, we are just a little, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get the tripod to open up here for me. We are about um, a few miles to the north of Titusville, which of course is directly across from the Cape. It's very windy today here, but it looks like the tripod's going to be stable in this position, so let's just see what happens. I have very poor internet here. Oh, it looks like I've got a couple bars of 5G. So I guess I can maybe try to tune in uh, on YouTube and see if I can find the countdown. And let's see here. Yep, HTS113BT live now. Flying for its 10th time and the other half flying for its 11th time. And after separation from the second stage, both bearing halves will return minutes, to Earth 51 and will be seconds. recovered by our recovery team. <clears throat> At T-minus 7 minutes and 44 seconds, Falcon 9 is tracking no issues and the payload is healthy. Falcon 9 has been loading propellants since T-minus 35 minutes and will finish loading at around T-minus 2 minutes. The range is ready to support and weather is green for our mission today. And if for some reason we don't launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at 12.53 p.m. Eastern Time. For oh, now, let's, let's not a scrub it. today's mission and the payload that's on board Falcon 9. And if you're just joining us, welcome here to the launch pad. T-minus 7 minutes, 7 seconds, and counting till launch of today's commercial payload mission for the uh, Indonesian telecommunications company. As always, if you guys have questions, you can send those in the chat by taking us at the launch pad, and we'll work on answering you live. We just had a call out there for engine chill. Those nine Merlin 1D engines are now beginning to uh, cool down in prep. <laughs> and it starts buffering. Well, um, like I say, uh, as you can see, the skies are just severe clear as... Uh, my friend Jim likes to say when he goes flying. So we've got uh, a really beautiful, um, beautiful sky to see this launch with, I hope. I'm actually going to come out here a little bit because I don't know what direction it's going to go or anything else. But we're going to hope that we can track it. I'll move the cameras if I need to. Of course, with my cell phone, I can move around with it. That's easy enough. But I also have the um, DJI Osmo Action 4 on the tripod. Six minutes till launch. Oh my god, there it is.
can't find it. Well, there you have it. Overall, I guess I'd have to say that this was a rather underwhelming experience. Don't get me wrong, it was very cool to watch it in person, and it was the 300th launch of a Falcon 9, uh, which made it, I guess, extra special. But it was a considerable distance away, and... Um, don't trust the uh, YouTube live streams or the television or whatever when they're still in the countdown. Believe me, it's already left the ground. Uh, there's definitely a delay on those video feeds. So I was a little bit uh, surprised when I saw it rising above the trees uh, while uh, on, the, uh, on the YouTube live stream on my phone, they were still counting down. But anyway, um, the, the one thing that I have often felt about live streams and television coverage of any launch is always that they give you such a tight shot on the vehicle itself and you don't get much of any context around you. So you're not really able to see the arc that the vehicle is making as it pitches down range. You don't have any sort of sense of direction as to where it's going. Um, the camera is continuously adjusting its zoom so that you're getting a, a nice tight view of the vehicle. And so uh, it's good to see it in person live because then you have a much greater sense of where it where the rocket is um what it's doing that sort of thing but um yeah i mean uh, kind of far away at least i did get this uh, one particular still frame from my 10x zoom on my Samsung S22 Ultra, so shout out to Samsung, um, I, you got me a great uh, frame out of a, a 4K video that I was recording, and boy, it was so hard to try and track that thing. It Just as soon as, you know, I moved in such a way that it left the frame, trying to get it back was impossible. I'd have to zoom all the way back out again and try to zoom back in. In the meantime, I'm like trying to watch this thing, right? So, um I'm trying to split my attention between, you know, recording it for all posterity and actually enjoying it in the moment. And I really just wanted to enjoy it in the moment. Um, I think if I ever am in Florida again, it uh, probably would be a great idea to visit the uh, Titusville area again and uh, maybe even cross over the uh, Titusville Causeway or whatever it is that they call it uh, that connects the... Uh, uh, the mainland of Florida to the uh, Cape itself, and because I think that you can get out there a little ways, but uh, I think five, uh, the closest that you'll ever get is about five miles. So uh, this was 20 miles as the crow flies to the launch pad. So um, that's what it looks like from 20 miles away, uh, plus a little zooming uh, in and in and out uh, and and trying to catch things as best I could. So help, hope you enjoyed it. I mean. It's kind of one of those things where, yeah, you probably just had to be there. I get that. 
Um, but it was a bucket list item for me and, and, uh, and very cool to see. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll catch you in the next one.